Welcome everyone for another podcast for the group Mindfulness and Positivity. This one, I've never actually said that every single podcast I ever do, I've maybe looked like I'm unorganized within it because I never ever look, because often the um, Katie will say, today you've got the amazing Sue Stone, I can actually see her. She's just down in a little thing at the bottom. She can't see me, but I can see her. And Sue Stone sounds amazing, but I never look to find information about people because I want this when I meet someone for the first time, I don't want to have anything that preconceived about someone or looking. I want to be right there in the moment, take it all on board and listen to what they've said, listen to what they say right there, right then, and be it right or wrong. I don't know whether that is, but I keep doing it. And it seems to work. So I'm going to bring Katie in now, who's uh, who's from the group. Hey, Katie. Hello, hello, hello. How are we doing? You good? Are we ready? I'm always doing a little introduction before someone comes on. And I saw you. Sue's there now. She was there early. So we're bringing her oh. in. So you're all going to introduce Sue for us now. Introduce her, then I'll bring her in. Oh, so Sue is a gorgeous, gorgeous friend of mine. And she is hugely inspirational. Very, very excited to see her gorgeous face because it's been a while since I've been able to see her. Um, she is an author. She is a transformational leader. She runs her own foundation. She is a personal and a business coach, and she is also, you'll love this, Christian, she is the UK's happiest and most positive person. Is she? Yes, Right, she I'm is. competing. I want to come. All right, I'm up against her. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready for her. Bring her in now. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Hi. Hi, Christian. Hi, Katie. Hi. Thanks for that. Thank yes has been recognised in the media as the yes. UK's happiest and positive person, yeah. Can I just check something? Can you, do you know when you're in that little thing, can you hear what I'm saying before you come in? Yeah. I didn't know that people could do that. <laughs> and you, and just to let you know that you said she can't see me, I'm thinking, I can't. <laughs> <I'm listening." laughs> I can't believe it. You better be nice about me. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Good job. I am a nice guy because you know what? I've never known that. And I've <laughs> Wow. Well, I, I couldn't have think of a better thing to be introduced as. So you are, what, go on, what is that title, the final title we got? You are the UK's. No, most... I've been labeled in the media as the UK's happiest and most positive person. So there we go. Out of everything you could get, that's one of the best things that you could ever get, I think. I, I, I actually believe I am. <laughs> so, um, hey, yeah, my life, I guess, is look, here we go. Is that around the right way? You <laughs> love life, you know? <laughs> I love it. Go on, why then? Go on, why? I, 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 I want to get that title, and I think people who meet me give me that title. I get that title after a bit. So, what's giving it you? Why, why are you, you've been labeled like more, you know, like, why did you get the label? Well, Hey, there's a bit of a story to this. So I used to, I haven't always been like this. In my former life, as I call it, I was probably the UK, I forgot what it felt like to be happy. I was so miserable, very stressed. Oh. Um, you know, I don't know how much of my story you want to share, but I, it, things got pretty All desperate. of it, every bit of it, every single oh, okay. part Kate, of it we want to share, if that's all right. Katie, People Katie knows, but... Um, <clears throat> if, yes, you, so if you want to share it, because the reason why I say it is because we're in a group where people come because not everyone's found it, but a lot of people are looking for it. A lot of people have found happiness, peacefulness, but a lot of them are searching and every single journey gives someone else some, you know, like, and I want it. I want it anyway. So go on, Sue, let's have okay, it. Okay. So years ago, I split up with my husband. I don't need to go into too much things, but I had a belief at the time that once one thing went wrong, a load of other things would go wrong. And of course, I hadn't realized what a self-fulfilling prophecy that was going to be. Mm. And, you know, things were very dramatic financially. We were running a business together and it was literally getting, going from bad to worse. And I was desperately trying to borrow money and getting credit cards to fund loans and loans to fund mortgages. I mean, trust me, we were absolutely maxed out, second charges, you know, on the property. And I mean, it was horrendous, to be honest, but it, I was had no idea. I was just so caught in the drama, horribly embarrassed about how things were, desperately trying to keep things going. 
you know, driving a car on high finance that in the end I couldn't afford to pay and then it went into negative equity. I mean, I could go on and on. Mm. And and then it, 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 the sort of turning point came um, that one day uh, I had three young kids. They're obviously older now. And <laughs> yeah. kids, Katie knows them. But um, three young kids and uh, this one day having been robbing Peter to pay Paul, moving money around from accounts and phones coming I was facing you know people chasing me for money and I also had the bank trying to repossess my home so I had to be a litigant in person and represent myself to stop my home being repossessed it was the most dreadful time that I was consumed with fear for want of a better word and it's absolutely true I remember thinking one day I cannot remember how it feels to feel happy Uh, but this turning point came when this particular day, I remember it so vividly, and I realised I had maxed out on every single bank account we had, the credit cards, and I couldn't get my hands on a penny. And that feeling of, oh my, well, I probably went, oh, I probably went, oh my goodness me, <laughs> in other words. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> and I remember thinking, oh my God, have I even got any money in my purse? And literally going to my handbag and in my purse, I had just £10 left. And that story, obviously, the media have liked that story over the years because I was embarrassed, Mm. horribly embarrassed. But it was years later that I decided I might as well share this, what I've gone through to hopefully give people hope that whatever Mm. the situation is, things, you can come back from this. Mm. And um, and I was a single mum with three kids with an ex-husband, be it that we are very good friends now, but he, he took no responsibility, left me with all the debt and never paid a penny towards the kids. So oh. I really have done it as a, a woman, lady, female, girl, whatever you want to call me, um, <laughs> on my own. And uh, so that was my, should we say, my wake up call when I, and I literally did the following morning, woke up and thought, I had a cry. And just thought, how the hell has my life come to this? But I knew at some level, I thought, Sue Stone, you got to do something to change your life because no one else will do it for you. And that started my searching for reading positive thinking, but yeah. in pursuit of happiness, you know, positive Th- thinking books, yeah. spiritual books. You yeah. know, anyway, I won't go on too much, but that, that there started the journey of discovery of mm. how powerful our thoughts and emotions are and yeah. all that sort of thing. So... And I just made it my mission to work on myself. I think that is it. Take responsibility. Work yeah. on yourself. Work on your thinking. And and yeah, I could go on and on, but I'll stop talking. I'm totally <laughs> with you. Everything you say is my own journey that I, I'm on myself, and I think everyone in the group is that. I was just, I just bumped into this really cool Italian guy that I know. He was actually a cage fighter, but he's a cage. He does it as he does it for fun. A cage fighter. He's a business owner as well, and it, we were just having this discovery, this discussion that you can't take a day off working on yourself or to be happy because if you take the day off of yourself and pushing yourself forward, that's when you can let that, the unhappiness in. I find it's about habits. What's your go on, Sue? What's your morning habits? Well, I think. To answer your question here, um, just say, I don't have to work hard at being happy. I don't have, being grateful is, is an absolute key. And my first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, when I'm in that sleepy state, when you're in what we call the alpha brainwave state, that is when the door is open to the subconscious mind. So mm. I urge people to spend at least five minutes thinking of all the things you've got to be grateful for and the people you love, and but really feel it. Don't mm. just say, I'm so grateful. You know, no emotion, mm. does it has no impact. So it's actually feeling that gratitude. But all I would say is that in the beginning, I had to work on myself. It was a mm. moment by moment awareness and the fear of being homeless because I kept saying, I realised I was doing it all wrong. I was visualising and thinking what I didn't want to happen. I kept saying, I'm going to be homeless for my children. I'm mm. never going to be able to feed them. And then I started realising my thoughts create my future. Well, yeah, it's a very simple phrase, but it's the emotion behind yeah. the thought that is more powerful. But mm. um and that was when I thought, all I'm doing is visualising myself homeless. So the fear of that made me work on myself and I would deliberately plant. I had no idea how I was going to achieve it, but I saw myself happy laughing in a sanctuary of a home and had no idea how to achieve it. But 
All I want to say is that over the last 20 years, I haven't got a single qualification in any of this, but what I have got is 20 years of self-study, research, applying it in my life, understanding the science of quantum physics, and I always share it simply, but also understanding neuroscience. And uh, we're not hardwired. We know we can create new neural pathways in our brain. Repetition, repetition, repetition. So whereas in that moment I was hardwired into the fear and desperation, I'm now hardwired into just being grateful for the now. Mm. It is what it is. And if it's coming to my experience, I have a choice how I'm going to respond to that. So I see life in such a different way. But of course, there's that transition. Mm. So I, I'm just my my main focus is this moment is all I've got. So let's yeah. thrive in, in this moment, like with you two gorgeous people. <laughs> So I'm not going to mention it now, but when we finish the call, we always stay on. But your journey to start at the beginning, when I said I'm working, and Katie knows a bit about my journey at the minute, and I'm doing really good in in having, I I had something happen to me that wasn't something I chose. So I have to, and today was a prominent day. I'll tell you about it when we finish the, doing the podcast, because I'm not ready to talk to everyone else about it, but it is going to be a huge part of a new journey that I'm setting off. No, well what are you thinking from it, Katie, then? What about you, personal happiness? So my I've got a I've got a bit of a routine. You mentioned in Brett, so we did a, a podcast with Brett this morning. Um, Sue obviously knows Brett as well. I loved and, him. Loved yeah, him. he was brilliant, isn't loved he? Him. So loved we him. were talking. We talked a little bit about Adam Adam Hart's podcast that we that you did a few weeks ago with the with the breathing. And Brett was talking a little bit about breath work as well. So I'm doing a lot of breath work. Um, so three times a day i'm doing the exercise that adam taught us where you breathe yeah hands on your heart and you breathe before um and then you breathe out for seven and that's all to do with gratitude so it's a 33 second well it's an 11 second process and you do it three times a day um so i'm doing that a lot i'm actually a case study for a lovely lady in america who's doing a breath work course at the moment so once a week we do breath work sessions um via zoom which is lovely so i'm really getting into breath work i'm doing a lot of research on breath work as well um kind of in line with yoga and meditation and what i'm teaching and gratitude for me is massively important and a kind of opposite to you sue i do mine at the end of the day so the last thing i do before i go to bed as soon as my head hits the pillow I go through all of the things about my day that I'm grateful for. And it, you're so right. It's really important that you feel those feelings rather than... Just I do like, it both times, oh, actually. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah. Love No, it. well, I'm just saying it's just natural because when you're, you're in that sleepy state, that's a powerful time to mm. do it, isn't it? When oh. the uh, brainwave state when the door is open to the subconscious mind. Yeah. So. Well, so, I did a video on this. Uh, that uh, I read a little article on the subconscious mind, like, Say if I've got the next day, I've got a big challenge. What I'm doing now is before I go to bed, I go, right, when I get up tomorrow, this challenge, I'm going to go right into it. My energy is going to be really high. I'm going to be focused on making it happen and everything. I'm going to do it. And I talk to my subconscious mind before. And then when I get up in the morning, it, all night, it's been stored in there. And when I get up, it's like I had this weird thing where I had this thing I was doing every day. And I said, and I knew at this stage, I had to stop it. So what I said was, night before tomorrow i never do it and i've done this for about 30 years at lunchtime i said tomorrow i'm never going to do it again and i've never done it again since as simple as that i did it on one night and i set that conditioning and i and i think the subconscious mind is the most amazing tool if you can tap into it yeah love it absolutely love it Kate, you talking about breath work. You know, Nick, I've got, um, Kristen, I've got uh, my daughter, Natalie. I mean, Kate knows my, my children. And I say my she says children. they're amazing. She my said, kids, yeah. me they Nat amazing. is my PA. And then yeah. um, got identical twins, but they don't look identical because one's got longer hair now, one's got short hair, but they are biologically identical. But Nick, in particular, is really into his yoga, but he's really been. Uh, he's big in his breath work as well. Yeah. And in fact, Nick, all three of my kids contributed to my last book. And Nick talked about breath work, just self-transformational tools, really, you know, meditation, mm. all that. And I think that is the key with all this is 
if you get a challenge, we all kind of know what to do, but mm. it's doing what we know. And when life throws us a challenge, it's mm. remembering to use the tools. Yeah. And, and that is it. Just remember if, you know, negative emotions are there for a reason, mm. let's bring them up, you know, and, and deal with them. But I love all sorts of things, EFT, emotional freedom technique, the tapping, Ho'oponopono, the breath work, meditation, walking out in nature, barefoot. There's mm. so much we can do. For me, I love being out in nature. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, that's my, what well, I live in the Lake District. So where I live is just the screenest, just everywhere I live is phenomenal outside. So I do that a lot. But I hadn't, I, you said tap, you said, I, I hadn't heard of tapping. You said about three things that I've never even, you said EL, e, EFT. EFT emotional freedom technique um which is does what it says on, on the tin it really is quite incredible i can tell you a little story about that actually yeah, please because i'm interested it was created by gary craig i finally i have met him he got in touch with me when i started promoting eft and he's in california and when i was in california with the boys and i had lunch with him he's such a great guy so we've got wow. a nice connection gary and i but he i went years ago i was in my former life, I was, as I was starting to come out of it, should we say, you know, and still facing all my horrible challenges. Mm. And one day I was really angry and upset. And I went to see this lady, Di Egby Edwards. Katie, do you know Diane Egby Edwards? She's local. She's lovely. She was I here at my book school. I but I've come across her. Yeah. I'm definitely great girl, great lady. And I just went to see her. I just want, I want someone, I, you know, I need to go and see her sort of thing anyway. And she said, well, tell me about last night, you know, when you put the phone down and, and I saw, I started to relive the experience and I was, and then of course I got myself all worked up. You know, if mm. we, every time we relive it, we're wiring yeah. and wiring the same old circuits mm, and yeah, started yeah. getting all worked up and crying. And then she started taking me through this tapping process. So it's like acupuncture without the needles. So you're tapping on the meridian points. So she started taking me through going, even though I have this feeling, I truly deeply love, accept and forgive myself. And all down, and we're repeating this, and I'm telling Christian at the time, I was thinking, what the hell are you doing now, Sue Stone? This is the most ridiculous thing. Anyway, so we go through this tapping process and then, we did it again, but with more positive words in it. You know, I'm now letting it go and remain calm and comfortable, for example. Anyway, so we went through it all. And then she said, right, take, go back to last night. And how do you feel now? And it, I could not get angry or upset. Oh, I yeah. was, it was like a mini miracle for me. I just was like, I was trying desperately hard to wind myself up again, and I couldn't. The memory was still there, but the charge and the emotion had completely, okay. it, was just, it was amazing. And since then, I'm not a qualified EFT practitioner, but I do share it with people, and I have people in my Sue Stone Foundation that are qualified EFT practitioners, and there's a lot of great people doing this so if you've got real deep-rooted issues i recommend people definitely mm. go and see someone but it was quite incredible and the other mm. thing that i particularly like is that now they've proven through mri and cat scans that the tapping when you actually do the process the tapping sends a calming signal to the amygdala which is that fight or flight mechanism in our mm. brain that stress detection mechanism and it is amazing so that's eft um, wow i love it actually i do you know when you said you feel a bit odd i'm not bothered about any of that now because i think uh, i think about the process of what, main product is what i want like one of them ones some guy wants to take me and do the wet cold water swimming and he's got a little bit of a ceremony he wants to do i really don't like the idea of it but i'm still gonna do it because i said yeah you know and it's like how do I know how it's? Yeah, yeah I'm like just. But around my way, everyone's doing cold water swimming without wetsuits in in the winter. There's a and there's down a, here, there's I know loads of people that go on the beach here. Yeah, and I've done the cold shower in the morning. That they say that if you can get through a cold shower in the morning, what else can you get through? And I did that for a week. I found that so hard as well. I was like turning it on fully cold, and it was it was like a pain. I've never really experienced. And it was on my head, and it just felt. I don't, I, everyone's done it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm weak. 
But I did do it, and I left with, and sometimes now I've got something on, I think, right, it's a tough day today, getting that cold shower, because if I can get through that, I can move on and get through something else. Oh, and it's... <laughs> I tell you, it doesn't draw me in. I've got a swimming pool here. That trust me, that's quite cold enough with all the cold weather we've had. So I don't need to get in the cold shower. <laughs> it did. You know, I did it for a week. I did it for a week because I said I'll, I'm one of them. If someone says it, I'll say I'll say yeah. I'm a yes man until the point where it gets too much. Right, I'm not too busy to not say yes yet. So if that ever happens, I'll have to reevaluate. But luckily, I'm not there yet. I'll have to put my thinking cap on then, Christian. See yeah, I well, I, I will do it because I'm in like, when you said before, so I'm in a natural thing of I want to feel the best I can possibly feel my whole life and I want to do whatever it is in order to make me get there. And, I'm, you know, I love reading. I love self-evaluation. I love, you know, I love accepting yourself and realising that's who you are and saying, no, I am doing that. It's lying, you know, like I used to lie to myself a lot that I was what I, I wasn't what I thought I was and I am. You know, I think, no, I do do that. And that's something I've got to change. Like I was saying with, in the last call with Brett, who I loved, I loved him. I thought he was absolutely, Katie brings great people. But I was saying my next thing is I want to be a better listener. That's what I'm working on at the minute. What are you working on at the minute, Sue? I think learning to listen is is huge. And that's something that I've done, especially with the work that I do now. Uh, so what am I working on at the moment? Yeah, personally. Um just thriving in the now i i'm i'm um into what in terms of projects or anything that comes to mind that makes you think that that's what you're on with anything that when i say what you work on any I'm particular in... mission at the moment i i feel <clears throat> if i get a nudge i'm a great believer that i'm guided having been very left-brained very logical working everything out you know my background was more in business and accountancy and all that sort of stuff um to then transition to literally let go let god surrender to the universe whatever you want to call it and and absolutely have a vision but my vision mm. is just to keep loving life and everything else and but it's plus the inspired action so mm. I, if I get a nudge, and I always say I walk out in nature and I, I literally do this. I, I sort of ha put my hands up and I say, I, one thing I do say every day when I'm out in nature, I go, I am rich beyond my wildest dreams. I am, I am, I am. I am rich beyond my wildest dreams in love and joy and health and wealth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I do that without fail. It makes me absolutely feel connected to source energy. And I say, if there's anything you want me to do in this world for the greater good, show me, nudge mm. me, make it obvious, and I will take that action. And that's exactly what I do. So if I'm not picking up anything, I don't ever force anything out there. But if I get a nudge, I'll take that action. So... That's how I live. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in the flow, baby. <laughs> I like, I'm in the belief, and I've come to through actions before that if you allow, if you allow everything to be, then everything will be all right. When you block it with your fears, with your anxieties, with your problems, which you self-created, you're blocking the universe delivering what you want. And I and I and I still do block a little bit because at the minute I'm got this big thing going on and it's it's not it's not a small one <laughs> and I'm doing unbelievably well and it's going to be something that I'm going to use how I've gone on with it to teach other people how to go on to their probably much smaller things that people can get caught up in the smallest of things and people can get over the biggest of things and somewhere in it there's just one way and that's what you just said letting it just let let yourself be let it flow without any fear, without any blockages. Yeah, I think that is absolutely spot on. And we know now, because I've obviously spent a lot of time studying quantum physics, and if we're in that, everything is energy. Science has proven that. You know, mm. we're all vibrations in nature, for want of a better word. And obviously, if, when we're in a negative emotion spectrum of fear, worry, anxiety, we are in that state of resistance in, 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 mm. in a lower vibration. Whereas if we're in the state of gratitude, love, joy, even if it's gratitude for the smallest things, 
then as you quite rightly say we're in in the flow yeah. and obviously you know i try and say to people if by thinking about everything that you don't want to happen yeah which is i've been the expert at doing that trust me i've been the absolute expert at doing it all wrong but all we're doing is putting that fear consciousness mm. out into the universe and of course mm. two things this is science that are in vibrational resonance with each other were drawn together and so, and the indicator of the vibration we're on is the way we're feeling so the mm. feeling is the key it really is so you're absolutely right by just trusting but it takes a bit of practice yeah. doesn't it mm. trusting letting go having faith uh that obviously some people are born with faith aren't they they just yeah. have faith whereas i didn't i yeah. work on myself yeah you, you meet some people like there's a woman who I know, she practices the three principles and she's a therapist. And so I know I, I once went to see her years ago when I was involved in a massive business and we realized I was a bit stressed because I was answering emails at 12 at night and constantly Ooh, thinking yeah. about work and then wondering why I was a bit stressed. But she has a husband called Brian. He doesn't read any of her books, does nothing. I've never met a karma guy. It's like every book I've ever read is about to teach you to be in the moment, to be calm and think about it. Some people don't need any books. They were born in this world, a creation that was free flowing and just, he's such a guy that, I don't know, like some, I don't, is it, do you think he's a blessing or I don't know what that is? I can't. No, it's wonderful. But, you know, when I had all my traumas and dramas all those years ago, in fact, Di actually said to me, Di Eggby, she said, one day you'll be really grateful for this. <laughs> and I, at the time, thought, well, Bugger off, sorry, it's a bit, I shouldn't be swearing, should I? Bugger you don't get it, do you? you do not get it. I was caught in that drama. So, but what I found is it's been actually quite useful to have so lived in the drama and have it so much as a former life that I can relate to so many people that, I mean, there's so much more to my story, but I don't want to bore you're not boring no 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 No, but i'm just trying to say there's there's loads that challenges i've gone through but like you and all of us is we're turning our often very challenging life experiences into giving hope and helping other people and i've got my sue stone foundation as uh, katie said and that is it's our 10 year anniversary coming up this year and i've got people who have wanted to be part of the team i do a two-day training like accredited coaches but everybody's got a powerful story Mm. everybody has and i had a fear of being homeless but i wasn't actually homeless Mm. i've got people in my foundation that have been homeless i've had people that gone through the most horrendous um health challenges or suicide Mm. attempts all this sort of thing that Actually, we can come together because if you're looking for some hope or someone to inspire you, if you know someone's gone through yeah. that and they've come out the other side, that gives you hope. And I think the yeah. most important thing now is hope. And I'm so mm. proud of everyone in my foundation. I think mm. that between us all, we've gone through pretty well, I would say, every challenge life can throw at you. So which is great, but it's like this is when we know and understand the bigger picture that yeah. it's a far bigger picture to life than these everyday challenges mm. that we face. So, yes, yeah, some people are just live in this flow, but oh, no, not me. I was caught in the drama. <laughs> well, so how we this came about, me doing it for the group, I joined this group on Facebook, Katie's group, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And then I thought... She who runs the group, it's Katie. I'll get Katie on my first podcast. So I, I got I got her on the podcast. But the very first person I actually wanted to get on was I started thinking of, and I'm still doing it now because I always want people on people who overcome things. First thing I thought of is a guy where I live. His name is Moonhead. <laughs> I only know him as Moon. It's bad to say because he's I just know he's it's actually called Wayne, but because I've always called him Moonhead, it's Moonhead. And when he was 19 years old, he played rugby. He's now 30. He's younger than me. He's about 37. He played rugby at 19 and became paraplegic from one game. So he had one game, and all he's got now is movement in one hand. But oh. this guy is fun- – I wanted him on because every time I see him in the pub, I find it phenomenal like that. He doesn't ever go on about what he's overcome and doesn't see it. He just gets on with living it. 
And I find him, I've always said to him, I hope you go on to help other people in your scenario because he's got some, he's got a sense of humor, presence, charisma that it just makes me feel unbelievable. Like, you know, like some people find a challenge, like, like my dad lost his leg. He never saw that as a challenge, but to someone else they do. And it's what you decide is the challenge. Do you know what I mean? You set a thing like he, like Moonhead's got the, <laughs> see, that's what I mean when you talk about Moonhead, he's got this thing, but I only know him as Moonhead. And that, that's how I'll always know him, but he's never been defined by it, even though it has defined his whole life. But when you see him, he's just the same person as he was before. It's mad. Amazing. Just, amazing. It's the most. Um, it would special. be amazing to get him. He podcast. didn't want to do it. He said, I'm not, I said, he said he, he didn't want to do it. I understood his reasons that he doesn't like to be the spotlight, even though he is the spotlight wherever he goes. Cause I, you know, like I've had a secret admiration for him and what, you know, like I, we all get caught up in little things. That's a, that's monumentally big thing that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the kind of story that's got powerful enough to give everyone light. You know, like you, Sue, you're obviously giving loads of people light through your story because sometimes you have to have hit the bottom to let everyone else know that you can get up from it. Yeah. And but that is the key. And I, I've had quite a lot of television over the years, and people always say, Sue, it gives me hope. And I think mm. having hope is mm. the most important thing. But even all those years ago, I was still very embarrassed about how bad my life had got and obviously was working on myself. And it got to 2005, having got my inner world right, and then my outer world was now starting to reflect, mm. that friends used to say to me, Sue, you, you help me see life in such a different way. You ought to be doing this. You, you ought to be doing this, you know, like helping people. And I remember thinking, gosh, if I could help other people find inner peace and happiness as I've done, wouldn't that be amazing? Mm. And I was like, oh, you know, in the beginning, a bit like that. But then after I heard it enough, I thought, actually, I am going to do that. And I all I did then was just buy the domain name, suestone.com and suestone.co.uk, and just thought, what do I do next? You know, but I think I set that intention to mm. be brave. And that is the thing, going from being, like Moonhead saying, going from being invisible to a certain extent yeah. to putting your head above the parapet to become visible, mm. then credible as you share, and, and then, of course, the abundance flows so but it takes courage to do that and so sort of, and I think one of the other big breakthroughs I've had some, quite some years ago I thought I know I'm giving everybody my best where, where whatever moment I'm in I will do to the best of my ability if someone comes to me for one-to-one -one or I'm talking or whatever or do my events at home and I think I know I genuinely am coming from the heart to do my best. Mm. What people's expectations of me are, I don't know. Mm. And I I let go of worrying about what other people thought of me. And it's been incredibly liberating because mm. we know not everybody's going to be aligned with everybody yeah. else, are they? That's the whole vibrational resonance, mm. of, you know. So uh, You've hit the head that, of, uh, that's something I'm trying. I'm like... So I started a YouTube channel, and I've really, it's funny. I think it's funny. Do you know what? I could say this now, Kate, because there's a funny thing from it. I was placed in a crisis, yeah, a year ago, well, about 10 months. So I set up a YouTube channel called The Crisis Coach. No idea why. No idea. I just started doing it. And do you know what? It bloody helped me. Because every video I did was basically about what I was going through myself, what I was working on myself at. So after a bit, I decided it's a bit passive-aggressive. Yeah, so which it was actually it's now I'm now called Christian Hoyle, catalyst of change, because that's what I am. I want to inspire change, and that's what you do. I've got so I found a guy called the uh, not the crisis coach, but something crisis coach. So I'm, I'm podcasting him. I sent him a message straight away and said, "Listen, I started off as this, so he's he's coming on board now." Funnily enough, I've I've got I've started putting out the energy to get podcasting now, and they're coming so much. It's like it's like great, you know. They're sort of coming, but. When I first started, oh, I feel embarrassed saying it, but when I first started, I wasn't like, so I've made a lot of personal changes in my life. And maybe I wasn't, I didn't used to be me. I used to be someone else 20 years ago. And it, where I lived, a lot of people still see me as that person. They don't know what I've done. So all the videos were going to show the new me. So I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. 
And then, so I checked my stats, because if you start a YouTube, you get no views. I, and I knew that. One weekend, I set my chats, and I'd got unbelievably big views. And I thought, wow, wow, I've already made it, yeah. Then I checked where the stats came from. There was 178 WhatsApp shares in my video. That's it. Wow. You don't, that, what that meant was the lads in Kendall, where I live, all found out. And they were all sharing my videos, and oh. I knew. I knew. And you know what? It was the only thing that made me really emotional, the fact that I had to overcome that because it was that fact you just said and what people think about you. And that's what I was consumed with. When really, what am I bothered that I'm doing a motivational channel that I want to give people advice and little... And I had to get over that, but it was really hard. Like, Yeah, Christian, do you know what, thinking about what you're saying, and I make a point of saying this to people, all I'm doing is sharing what has helped me. Hmm. I'm saying, you know, I can hand you the tools, you've got to pick them up and use them. And no one can knock your personal experience. So if we're just sharing genuinely from the heart, because, you know, I'll talk to anyone that will listen to me. <laughs> but I also know, <laughs> yeah, but I also know it's no point trying to push it on people. I have yeah. friends saying, oh, I wish my husband would come or I wish my wife would come. And, and but I say, as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yes. And you, you know, you can, people can hear it, they can hear it, they can hear it and think they're not interested, but they've got to be open and ready to hear the message. So, I mean, years ago when I first came out and started talking about all the stuff I'd learned, I was so mm. exciting. I, I did have some friends um, I found out, you know, had sort of laughed a bit about it, you yeah. know, and stuff. <laughs> but funnily enough, as years went by, and then they started, you know, they had challenges in their life. Guess mm. who became you but me, sort of thing. And it was, and then of course, years later, they got it. And I said, well, mm. this is actually what I've been saying to you for years. So, but there's no point pushing it on people. I, I, I don't push myself out there at all. I just feel I attract the people I can help. Yeah. End of. I, I, I have no marketing strategy. I just go, hello world, I'm mm. here. And obviously, having TV and stuff, obviously. It's you know expands one's audience quite considerably if they like what they see. So it's just I, been I a very general, natural, organic expansion. I don't tell anyone what some of minds are because if people like I could tell you both of you all my beliefs and you go yep yeah, I've yep yeah, I'm getting that. If you tell some of the other people the things that we've learned like manifestation and 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 uh, things around that they go are you nuts? And I would have said that at one stage. And the reason I've never told them because it sounds nuts and you have to wait for someone to, you're like, when someone's ready, you see it in them, they're ready. I, re I reckon they're ready for this piece of information and I give it them and then they go away. And like, it's funny enough, it's where I'm at now is one of my businesses and upstairs I have a hairdresser's and in that my kids, his mum works in it and we're not together anymore. And all the time I was with her, I wanted her to find spiritual awakening and she found it about a year ago. And now all that nonsense that she thought I was thinking, now she's going, I've just started that thing you told me ages ago. But she's now, and I've watched her change. She's pop, she's emitting a different thing now, and things are happening for her. And everything that she wants, that she want, they keep coming. And I'm like, hmm, works like that, doesn't it? It's pretty good, isn't it? And it's like, it's like a, it's like, it's like something that you can't understand. Like I can't understand lots. Like like the coincidence is not being coincidental. That happens a lot. Does it? Well, yeah. we would call it synchronicity or just trust the process. You know, that's the alignment of the energy, isn't it? But mm. this is, you know, what I really love about this is that everybody's always right because the negative thinkers are always right because they go, I knew it wouldn't work. <laughs> you know? and, and the positive thinkers are always right because they go, I knew I'd find a way. So, yeah, you're so right. You're so right. <laughs> that is, that, that is like that's that. so obvious, but I'm not far like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it is. I've shown this. Everybody is always right. The power of our belief, it's all about our belief, what's in our consciousness. It's our simply put, our energy, our consciousness is made up of our thoughts, our intentions, our feelings. And our beliefs, our beliefs about ourselves, and our beliefs about life. Mm -hmm. And as Neville Goddard said, the power of our belief yeah. is an infinite power against which no 
earthly force is of the slightest significance. So if we believe wholeheartedly our problems are too big to solve, that the, the, the solution will not come to us. However, if we can train ourselves to have different beliefs, we don't need to be tied to any beliefs. Just because someone when you were younger told you were no good, doesn't that hasn't does, doesn't need to be mm. your truth. Mm. And we can shift that. And um, that's why I say to people, when we start to live consciously and observe ourselves, what am I thinking, what am I feeling, and what am I saying? You know, every word we speak affects us at the quantum level. So if they say, I'm depressed, I'm worried, mm. I'm scared, I'm mm. poor. Yeah. We are literally commanding our beautiful yeah, yeah. internet intelligence to give me more of that. So yeah, yeah. identify your beliefs and actually say, do you know what? I'm going to let you go because that's yeah. a belief that serves me no purpose mm. because I am now open to all the ways solutions can show up in my, my life. I am now open to all the money-making opportunities that can come in mm. my life. Rather than believing life's a struggle, it's always difficult, guess what? It will be. So if we start to program ourselves to think in a more, in a different way, mm. uh, results happen quite quickly. You just mentioned Neville Goddard. I've only just found him recently. Oh, my God. He gives the greatest example. He says, you've probably heard this, and I don't relay things very well, so correct me if I start going off. But he's doing a meeting. He's doing a share. He's doing a meeting to uh, uh, give some coaching and someone's dad's bringing the son and he and he's the dad he's saying to the, the dad the son's saying to the dad listen I don't want to go here I'm not paying for a lot of nonsense to be said to me that I don't believe and I don't want to do it I don't want to go and we get there and Neville got out first thing he says was there'll be no charge for any of these things that are going I give all my work for free so certainly the guy's like ah right that's one thing done and he says I want you to imagine climb you're going to you're going to be climbing up a ladder all I want you to think of, when you leave this meeting, I want you to think about climbing up a ladder, when you're going to climb up a ladder, that if climbing up a ladder is going to happen to you. And he's gone on about the climbing up a ladder a lot in the whole meeting. So he goes, and the guy's going, the son again's going, that guy, what that was, uh, yeah, he didn't charge, but what a load of nonsense. What a load of nonsense. Two weeks later, that particular guy finds himself on a ladder. And he goes, as he gets to the top of it, he then goes back to that meeting and remembers, I have never been up a ladder. Within two weeks of that meeting, I'm going up a ladder. And it was the introduction of manifestation that you can be whatever you say is going to happen. So you could say I'm going to go up a ladder as one illustration of it, or you could say whatever is your dreams are. You can say what your dreams are, or you can say all your negative things that you just said. This is going to, oh, bad things always happen to me. Oh, do they? Because you're just asking them for him to come. I always get let down, people. People always reject me. No one likes me. No one, And everything that I say, all of a sudden, I keep attracting it. And it's just when you say the the basic, it's as simple as that. You are attract what you say you're gonna you're gonna go for, and it'll come to you. So I want to say I want every up. I get loads of opportunities sent, and I have a loving, blessing life, and that's what I want coming to me. If you can send it yeah. me now, Sue, I'll have it all if you can. No, I I think it's true. But what also I totally believe everything you've just said. But what is also interesting is that science. I always like to take it back that we know everything's energy. Mm. And mathematically, they've now proven that every single cell, for want of a better word, in our universe is connected to every single other one. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I think that's hugely exciting mm. and hugely powerful. And when I used to think years ago, when people used to say, oh, we're all one, we're all connected. I think, what a load of rubbish. We took it, just didn't get it. But we now know we are all connected. Yeah. So anything is possible. But we will only ever achieve in life as far as our thoughts and beliefs. So if we put that glass ceiling on ourselves, that is our bubble of experience. So yeah. I say to you, dare to dream. Open your mind up to anything is possible. But don't get frustrated if it doesn't happen straight yeah. away. Because, of course, frustrations effectively a negative energy that's going to block block you and create more things to be frustrated. So, yeah, anything is possible. And that is what makes life so exciting. I'm excited. I mean, these pod, I mean, podcasts are exciting. This is, I feel excited. When I, you know about nature. I did the podcast before, Kate. As soon as we'd done it, I went for a walk around the park just to feel a bit oh, of... Nice. So I did it because it makes me feel... 
Well, funny enough, I had to make a phone call. And I always make the phone calls outside. Oh, I've got like a nice, and that's what we want. That's the whole point. In like Katie's group is about like I connected to it because I was drawn to it, and all of a sudden I was wanting to do podcasts, and then she gives me an audience. Plus, she gives me people like you and Brett and someone else who are like phenomenal people. I, I've I've never heard of you. Now I bet you you constantly I'll see things because I'll now look yeah. at, look more. I, I don't check anyone out before, but I check them out a lot afterwards because I'm you know. Uh. Yeah, Brett's got a great inspirational story as well. Um, I talked for him when he was doing one of his events some years ago when he was in Bournemouth. And yeah, he's, he's, he, I was one of his speakers and he, he's a great guy. He's got such an inspirational story. So yeah, I think there's so, everyone has their unique gift to offer the world. And it's not a competition. I used to have people thinking, oh, it's a competition. That's the old paradigm. No mm. one's any better than anyone else. We've all got our own journey. And we're, it's all about collaboration, cooperation. This is mm. the new world. This is where we're going and, and sharing, caring. And this high vibration, it can be more, possible, uh, more important yeah. than now to know the power we've all got within us. Every single one of us has that power within us. No one is any more powerful than anybody no. else. But some people know. I would say we don't need fixing or rescuing. What we do need is knowledge of our own power and how yeah. to access it. We're not uh -huh. powerless victims in our universe. Mm. We are powerful co-creators. Yeah, yeah. Anyone can do this. I think that's it. You just you just said a word then that I think that I've been I I've, I've used it in my life. But people become a victim of something that's going on, and and when you decide to be the victim, then you decide for that to define you and override you. And one day when you let go of that shackles and say, no longer, no, 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 I'm not a victim of that now. I'm going to be the opposite. And that's when we have to move on. And I've met, so when I first started doing this, I started joining some other Facebook groups on depression and anxiety. I thought that's who I needed to help. I thought I spent a lot of time on my mindset, spent a lot of time thinking about uh, um, having a positive life. I thought there I'm meant to help. But then I discovered that some people become a victim of what's going on. And until they deal with that, they're not going to be able to move on. And I think, you know, that's a sadness. And I, I want everyone to move on. And I want everyone to feel intense, high energy. And everyone around me, I try my best on anyway. Anyone in my vicinity, I try my hardest. But you can't, you can't do everyone. Now, you sound like me when I was, you know, first sort of stepping out to do this. You just want to share and mm. think, oh, this is, you're just excited. But <laughs> as I say, I just, you know, let that go a long time ago. I'm, I am. Older than you, just in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I didn't even, I mean, I thought we were similar age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But the point is, it's just, you know, people are drawn to energy, even if they don't understand why. Mm. You know, aren't they? And positivity and things, and it's quite infectious and things. So I'm um, trying to force it upon people. They're just like shut down, I think. So, mm. but it's great. Everyone's out there. As I say, we've all got the seed of greatness within mm -hmm. us. Every single one of us, just like the oak trees already in the acorn. Mm -hmm. The acorn doesn't have to work hard to be an oak tree. It doesn't even have to be manifest itself as an oak tree. It certainly doesn't have to be worthy to become an oak tree. It's just a matter of the right nourishing and nurturing, i.e. the warm, the rain, you know, the water, just like us nurturing ourselves, nourishing ourselves, mm. positive self-talk. And then it's a very gradual emergence into its beautiful greatness. And we've all got that. But, of course, mm. where things go wrong is, it's you know, we all have to take a huge responsibility for the language we use for our children, if anyone's mm. children or, or whatever. And positive nurturing language is when people start to believe they're not worthy or they've had failures and they start mm. judging their future results on their previous experiences. That's when that gets lodged, should we say, in the consciousness and stops people naturally yeah. emerging. I absolutely love that analogy. That was brilliant. The air con to the oak tree. Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Brilliant. So, Katie, you know Sue a little bit more. Have you got anything you want to, to divulge for us? Things that I want her to divulge? Um, oh, well, yeah. Sorry, it was just a word. I only got my you can ask me anything, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 
Well, I, I'd, I'd, I'd written a few n little notes actually, and I know that you're really into the law of attraction. I know that you're really into quantum. Oh, physics. can I pause you there? Okay. I tend not to call it law of attraction anymore. Go on. Um, because and haven't done for a long time. In my second book, my first book is all those years ago, had a chapter on law of attraction. Mm -hmm. What I've realized is time's gone by, and the more I've studied quantum physics, uh, et cetera, and ancient wisdom, that quite fundamentally is ancient wisdom that has been around since the beginning of time, that in recent times, thanks to the secret and Ron de Bern, we say, has been labeled as the law of attraction. And I think at some level that has, it's certainly got out there, hasn't it? So I'm not trying to cut yeah. in, but as I say, I'm I'm big into universal law and the ancient wisdom and the science that backs it yeah. up, is yeah. all what I would say. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So anyway, sorry, Katie. No, 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 it's fine. So with quantum physics, now I don't know a lot about quantum physics. And to me, it's, it sounds quite kind of scary and intellectual and or oh, I don't I don't know enough about it but I know that you're very good at putting things into words that will will help other people to understand a little bit more about what quantum physics is I think well this is what uh, you know I do a whole chapter on understanding quantum physics in both my books and yeah, I was going to say is that in in your first book or is that in your second ah, book? It's it's like hold the book again let's have a look at that one two yeah. love life of that. what's the, which, that's the first that's one. the first one like it and that's the second one. Oh, that way the power within you now yeah okay like it <laughs> Love it. I think everything what you say in them books is exactly how I've been training myself to think for a long, a long time. Yeah, it, it is, it's just, I think, I try and keep it very simple for people. It's, but uh, I, the phrase, my thoughts create my future, is, is huge. And the way I feel in every moment is what I'm creating. Mm -hmm. And that's another key phrase. I know I'm not particularly answering your question on quantum physics, <laughs> but basically it's through our thoughts and our subconscious expectations is how we influence the way the electrons you know whether it goes into a wave or, or solid and the double slit experiment so um it's what when the scientists were observing it's how we observe something and when they were observing is this going to be a wave or is it going to be like a particle solid and they they built the experiment up to observe it mm. see it as a wave and it was a wave but when they set the experiment up to observe it as a solid particle like a bb you know bullet it was a solid particle so mm. it's through our thoughts and our emotions and our subconscious expectations is how we influence the outcome yeah. of what we create we it's could influence it we can influence it as yeah. well like we can and change it when they did the test it changed and they kept going why is it changing this because should be a consistent thing and that's when they started to i've just been watching quite a few videos on quantum physics recently because i'm intellect I'm, I'm an intellect a little bit but my, my memory of words is not very good so i have to recap all the time but I have, it's it's sensation it's just it, it shouldn't be as it works so that shouldn't it should be consistent and it isn't phenomenal I think that that could not be a more important time for people as the world stands i at agree the moment, that people understand the quantum physics yeah now that does immediately make that's why i have spent my time to be able to explain it simply, because otherwise things just go straight over people's heads. And people say to me, Sue, you make it so simple. And of course it can be more complicated, but I always feel, I remember somebody just, so I changed it up, when I did suestone.com, put it out there and then thought, oh, I better have a website sort of thing. And thought, what do I do next? And someone asked me if they could come to me for a one-to-one. -one. And I said, yes. But I remember thinking, well, what am I going to do with them? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a trained, whatever. And I thought, Sue, just do and share what's helped you so much. So that is exactly what I do. And I always explain very simply about the conscious and subconscious mind, the effectively the what we so we read. Mm. I share about universal law and quantum physics made. Obviously, I've expanded on that as years have gone by. Um, made simple and the other one I really like is explaining about the reticular activating system 
Now, I'm sure you know that's just a big fancy word for having our own Google, and we've all got it. All oh, right, I was brain. thinking, what the hell does with that word? I've never heard it. Oh, what was the word you said again? I find left brain people really like this. I remember some guy years ago going, well, I don't get all that universal fluffy stuff. He said, but now that makes sense. So mm. if we explain things in lots of different ways, that fundamentally, whatever you believe, we get more of what we focus on. Yes. But I, I think with the reticular activating system, as I say, it's a fancy word, but the analogy is we've all got our own Google in our brain. So if we key into Google, well, that's me on my tap laptop. People probably do that on their phone. <laughs> You're on the phone as well. And, <laughs> yeah. And if people key into Google, failure, poverty, misery, ill health. Mm. What does Google bring to you in a nanosecond? It, millions of bits of information related to failure, poverty, misery. However, if we key into Google, success, solutions, new opportunities, my perfect partner, happiness, whatever you want to look for, Google brings us millions of bits of information related to that. And that's exactly what our reticular activating system mm. doing is it's filtering out more of what we focus on. It's a bit like when you want to have, you'd like a, a certain car, People say, and all you do is spot the car everywhere. That, I, did that. I did exactly yeah. that with my Beetle. So there's, so I would say, if, if people can understand quite simply why it's important and how this stuff works, it makes it so obvious to work on yourself and change. Mm. And, and that's when magic and miracles really happen. I have a wonderful phrase. I put it on Facebook fairly recently. I felt inspired to share it with people to say, I create seemingly impossible miracles in my life. And it was one of my phrases that I used to say years ago. I started with, I believe in miracles. Miracles happen to me. And I trust in the power and the magic of the universe. That's what yeah. I had to start saying what, all those years ago to develop a a mindset around yeah. it but the particular one i love about creating seemingly impossible miracles is that the seemingly impossible will bypass the analytical conscious and subconscious and say well it's seemingly impossible but i can still do it rather than go well that ain't gonna happen so little phrases like that we can start to focus yeah. on that but we we need to be consistent that i have key. one I, I have a phrase and you'll notice I've writing a lot on your group. The universe always has your back if you let it. It is. Um, and, I, and everything that happens to me, my first reaction might be the emotion of what's going on. And now I'm I'm beginning to – I've got – I was saying this in my last podcast. Don't want to go, we're getting into awareness. Like I went outside to feel awareness before because when I'm in nature, I feel it. Like I love the sound of birds when they're having their little life. And you forget you – and then you start focusing on this. And then you look at the trees and you think, wow. And you start getting into that. There's no emotion then that's going in. I'm just appreciating the right ear right now. And that's what I'm trying to do with my podcast. We, but I don't know if it's right or wrong because I am unorganized as well. Like Brett said he was an organized. I was thinking, I bet he's better organized than me. But I come into these. I've written three questions. But I find when it flows, you go to places where you didn't plan to be. And they're the better places that you want to get to. You know, it's like a natural thing as it goes. I absolutely love doing this thing with you. So you were right, Katie. You, you, you were totally right. <laughs> yeah, I've got two things when we're off this thing that I'm going to mention to you. One that's apparent to you, actually, which is interesting. Another one was my story. But, yeah, we're getting to it. But thanks. It's been immense. And uh, if anyone wants to look at, find your books, or you, can you just say what your website is again? Or uh, Yeah, suestone.com. Quite simple, suestone.com. And I also have my suestonefoundation.com where I've got my accredited coaches and all their profiles of all the people who are interested in joining up in the foundation when I, as and when I do my next training. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Chad. Can I just ask one question before we finish? Yes. Because those, those of you who know you will know your kind of family situation and your home situation and i whenever i come round, i'm always just like oh i just i love that you all live together and that you just all get on so well and it just works beautifully is there is there kind of a key to that 
Uh, is there something, is there kind of some secret that keeps you all so tight together and getting on so beautifully? Because you all just seemingly live this beautiful harmony. We, do, yeah, we, we actually genuinely do. And I think having, and, and Christian, you won't know this, but I've actually got my ex-husband living with me as well at the moment. I which, get on unbelievably uh, well with my ex-wife. Unbelievably well. Like, she's like a sister. If someone had said, 20 odd years ago when we mm. split up, he'd be anywhere near me, mm. I'd have said, over my dead body. So uh, letting go, the past, forgiveness, yeah. all the rest yeah. of it, it's not yeah, forever. Yeah. But Katie, I think, and I'll, I know you know and love my kids as well, oh. and they love you, and you've given... We were know, hoping to get along, funnily enough. We were hoping to oh, come and do it time. live and have yeah. your kids on, because she says how yeah, amazing. The boys, yeah, the boys. Um, yeah. I call them boys. You, yeah, uh, women. Uh, but I think very handsome men. They are. They and very hand, the gorgeous daughter as well. The that's one thing I can say. My husband and I produced three very good-looking children between us. So that was a, that was a good job done there. <laughs> anyway, in answer to your question, all I was going to say is I think Katie, when we were so desperate all those years ago, and I was trying to hold it together and not cry in front of the children, but. The boys at the time, I had to, they were at private school. I had to pull them out of private school, everything. I was hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. And then suddenly that £10 moment and they had to go to state school. But they've always said to me, Mum, that was probably the best thing that ever happened to us because we wow. took for granted other stuff, which, of course, it was all a false way of living in hindsight. But I think being so close, come together and, of course, we, as I started working on myself, of course, it's rubbed off on my children. And I think we're very in the flow, but we have a huge respect for each other. They've been my greatest teachers to a certain extent. And I'm so proud of the beautiful people they are inside and out. Mm. And, yeah, we just, we are, a, a Diana Cooper, you know Diana Cooper? Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you do? Yeah. She's lovely. She's an author, done about 30 odd books now, more on angel spiritual stuff. But she's a great friend of mine now, and she, or has been for quite some time, but she was just to me, Sue, your family, you're all from Venus. You're here to spread love across the world and show that families can live like this. I said, Oh, well, I don't know. We just do what we do. So, yes, it's, it's yeah. And luckily, we've got enough space that, um, during lockdown last year, we had our polytunnel project. We, you know, we've got a bit of land here and 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 enough space to give each other space. I think that's the key and respect and communication. That's all I would say. Communication is key. Don't build up. Just talk and understand how we all feel. And yeah. Anyway, sorry, a bit of a long-winded answer. No, I like. I feel. I loved it. I love doing it. I, I it's find very simple. It just, I'm in the same boat. I get on unbelievably well with my ex-wife. I didn't at first when we thing, but she's my kid's mum, and I've got three amazing kids as well. Like, I'm very proud, and like we co-parent all the time. We have no, we don't have that. We just we, I. It's like we're still together. Like she knows I do the certain bit, a bit of shout with the boys, and it works. And why, why, and everyone can't understand it. That's the thing. No one else can understand it, and that's what I like the most about it because I understand it, and so do my kids. They've never been bothered by our split up, and we have this. You know, like it's great. I feel special about it. I feel, you know, it's a blessing. Mm, yeah, well done. That's lovely. Lovely to see. Thanks, Sue. You've been amazing. I'm going to press the, the stop and recording now and we'll just Thank carry you on a so second. Much. It's been really lovely to see you. Thank Thanks you, a lot. Daddy.